Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Major Tony Funkhauser, the Norfolk District Deputy Commander. On behalf of Brigadier General John P. Lloyd, the North Atlantic Division Commander, welcome to today's change of command ceremony. This morning, we bid farewell to Colonel Brian P. Hawker and welcome Colonel Sonny B. Abichal. Thank you all for attending. We'd like to recognize our special guest attending today's ceremony. Chief Anderson from the Nanseman Indian Nation Tribe. Ms. Diane Kaufman, Regional Director, representing Senator Tim Kaine's office. Mr. Tyler Edmonds, District Chief of Staff, representing Congresswoman Jen Kaine's office. Mr. Joe Schumacher, District Director, representing Congressman Rob Whitman's office. Mr. Ephraim Anderson, Constituent Services Representative, representing Congressman Bobby Scott's office. Mr. Travis Boyles, Secretary of Natural and Historic Resources, representing Governor Glenn Yelkin's office. Major General Retired Bruce Scott. Major General Retired Bob Whittle. Major General Retired John Kim. Colonel Hallberg's family, his wife, Lieutenant Colonel Sarah Hallberg. Sons, Isaac and Chase. Daughter, Elise. Mother, Marie Lerma from Hemet, California. Father, Phil Hallberg, and bonus mother, Anne, from San Jacinto, California. Colonel Abichal's family, his wife, Ormi Abichal. Sons, Arjun and Dev, and his mother, Joe T. from New Jersey. The Norfolk District wants to also welcome our great partners attending today's ceremony. Without these positive relationships, we would not be able to accomplish what we want to do to make the Hampton Roads and the Commonwealth of Virginia a better and safer place for all. From time immemorial, armies throughout the world have conducted ceremonies to commemorate victory over an enemy, to honor their heroes, to celebrate special occasions, or to pay homage to their fallen comrades. These ceremonies add color and pageantry to military life. In the United States, the foundation of our present ceremonies was laid by the Continental Army. Today's ceremony is a reflection of the procedures practiced since the dawn of our nation. Today's ceremony is derived from our nation's first manual of ceremonies, the Blue Book, written by General von Steuben. The ceremony that you are about to see includes the arrival of an official party, honors to the nation, change of command, remarks, and the conclusion. We hope you enjoy this historic event. The reviewing officer for today's ceremony is Brigadier General John Lloyd. The music is provided by the 208th Army Band, U.S. Army Reserves, and is under the direction of Staff Sergeant Curtis Earl. Please rise for the entrance of the official party. Brigadier General Lloyd has chosen to confer honors to Colonel Hopper for this ceremony. And remain standing for our national anthem and the invocation given by the TRADOC Deputy Command Chaplain, Chaplain Light Shin. <laughs> Thank you. 
I invite you to pray as I pray in my faith tradition. O gracious God, you are the giver of breath and life, of strength and talent and of rank and position. So I thank you for your sustaining and guiding presence in the lives of these two men, for their leadership to our nation, to the Army, and to the Norfolk District Corps of Engineers. As Colonel Brian Halbert steps into next chapter of his life, and as Colonel Sonny Avichal steps into this leadership opportunity, I pray that you will be their firm foundation, uphold them in your strength, and guide them in your wisdom. May you encourage them in all their endeavor to live above the common level of life and grant them new ties of friendship and new opportunities of service. Bless this ceremony and everyone who has gathered here today to celebrate, and all of which I ask in the name of the great friend and master of all. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <clears throat> On behalf of the soldiers, civilians, and families of the Norfolk District, a bouquet of red roses are now being presented by Mr. Robert Schweitzer to Mrs. Sarah Palmer in tradition of symbolizing the appreciation of the support and contributions made by the loved ones. Mr. Schweitzer will also present a single red rose to Colonel Halper's daughter, Elise. <laughs> a bouquet of yellow roses are now being presented by Miss Candace Motomau to Miss Orby Abichal to welcome her to the district. <laughs> Miss Carolyn Cable will now also present a single yellow rose to Colonel Abichal's mother, Joe T., and mother-in-law, Papana. <laughs> a Norfolk District coin is now being presented by our ACMA intern, Miss Alyssa Avery, to Colonel Abichal's children, Arjun and Dev, as an official welcome to the court. Change of Command is a simple, traditional event that is rich with symbolism and heritage. Key to the ceremony is the passing of the unit's colors. These colors represent not only the lineage and honors of the unit, but also the loyalty and unity of its soldiers and civilians. The colors are the commander's symbol of authority, representing his responsibilities to the organization. Wherever the commander is, there are also the colors. Throughout history, commanders ensured their unit's flags were carried by one of their most trusted officers. This practice has been used in the United States Army until 1813, when the regulations were changed and the flag was entrusted to the color sergeants and sergeants major. District commanders select one of their most trusted civilian advisors to perform these honors. For Ms. Or today, Mr. Keith Lockwood, Chief of the Water Resources Division, will have this honor role. Passing of the colors symbolizes the transfer of authority from the outgoing commander to the incoming commander. Because of the reverence the commanders feel toward the colors, they are kept over their left breast during the transfer. The passing of the colors demonstrates to the soldiers and civilians of the organization the old commander has passed the mantle to the new commander. With this, also passes the loyalty of the workforce to their new commander.
By authority of Army Regulation 600-20, paragraph 2-5, the undersigned assumes command of the Norfolk District, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, effective 12 July 2024. Signed, Colonel Sonny B. Abichoff, commanding. Ladies and gentlemen, Brigadier General John P. Lloyd, the North Atlantic Division Commander. Thanks for that, Tony. You're doing a great job. <laughs> Hang in there. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, leaders, distinguished guests, and friends of the Norfolk District. Welcome. Thank you for coming together on this occasion to recognize Colonel Brian Hallberg and Colonel Sonny Abshaw. It's an honor today to preside over this change of command, and I certainly want to extend a warm welcome to General Kem, uh, General Whittle, General Scott. I know General Funkhauser wanted to be here uh, for the ceremony, couldn't be, couldn't be. Also, Tom Asbury, Tom, there you are. Uh, Pat Kinsman, Pat said, thanks for being part of the ceremony and taking time. It's special to see all of you, uh, former USACE commanders uh, who have served and understand what today means to Brian and Sonny. So we appreciate it, and I certainly appreciate you being here. I'll go off script right off the bat. Tony. Uh, has read throughout the ceremony the importance and the historic nature of changes of command. But I also want to tell you there's an emotional part of the ceremony that I think you are about to witness as well. To give up command after three years is tough. After you have put your heart and soul into an organization that means so much to you and the people, predominantly civilians, that make up the Norfolk District. You are special in every way, and I wanna thank you for that. Above that, though, you say district commanders are different. They carry not only the burden of taking care of the people of the district, but they carry the burden of the nation upon them making sure that we serve the communities that we live in and also the greatest nation on the earth in maintaining our waterways, providing military construction for our troops and all the things that they carry as a burden on them every day to make sure they deliver for the nation. So everything that Tony said is true but a USACE change of command is just a little bit more different. To the Norfolk team, there's a lot that happens behind the scenes that takes place to put an event like this together, and I thank you sincere, sincerely for a fantastic job that you have done as we mark the occasion uh, with this memorial ceremony. And I want a special thank you to Jamika. Where are you? Jamika's. She's outside, right? <laughs> of course she is, but uh, special thanks to Jamika for keeping us straight uh, through this. To lead is no simple task. It takes dedication and a strong support network. Today we celebrate this honored tradition and thank our military families for supporting our commanders. Let me recognize the Hallberg and Abishaw families accordingly. I want to welcome Brian's parents, Marie Lerma, Phil, and Ann Halbert from California for making the, the trip out here. And it was so nice to meet you at dinner last night. Thank you. But more specifically to the moms of Brian for your service and taking care and giving up your son during his military. So Sarah and Brian recently celebrated their silver wedding anniversary, 25 years together. Now that's special, 
But what makes it even more special is they're a dual military couple that have stayed together and done this, in my opinion, the best of the best. Because we know military life is hard, but when you're dual military, it's just a little bit more of a challenge. And so they have done joint deployments to Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. Sarah, an engineer officer in her own right, and magnificent at it, currently works for NATO Allied Command Transformation, who NED has a strong relationship. Uh, but thanks to Sarah, we get in the door a little bit better with Sarah being over there. She'll retire on active duty from service in January as well. Sarah, thank you for your service. <laughs> They have three children, Isaac, 20, an Eagle Scout and currently serving in our Army as a private first class at Fort Eisenhower, a cyber warrior, as I understand, Isaac, thanks for your service, buddy, and appreciate you making the drive up from Augusta to be with us today, your dad. Chase, where's Chase? There you are, Chase. I sat next to Chase at dinner last night he scrolled through social media the whole night. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't think I noticed, Chase. <laughs> he did share his fries with his sister. He's a rising Eagle Scout, airsoft enthusiast. Thanks, Chase, for your support to your dad as well. Elise and I had a strong conversation. Love soccer. Hanging out by the pool, which we would all love to do with you, Elise. It's really hot out there. But Elise, I want to do a special thing for you. Because last night, last night, you said, hey, General Lloyd, if you could do one thing for me, I want a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so your dad has got plenty of time on his hands. <laughs> <laughs> So, Brian is still on active duty orders, and I'm going to give him a direct order to get you a puppy. <laughs> We're going to get that puppy, at least. I got, I'm, I'm in your corner. I'm in your corner. Halbert family, thank you for your support to Brian. Sonny, I want to welcome your mother, Jyoti, and your in-laws, Harish and Kalpanya Patel. Thank you for your support to your son as he takes command of the Norfolk District. More importantly, Sonny's wife. I'm not gonna do it, Orby. I'm not gonna do it, but I want to. We got an inside joke going. <laughs> Orby's been special and active in the Army Engineer Spouse Club, which I know is near and dear to both you and Stacy's heart and your support in the PTA. Thank you, Orby, for your support to Sonny uh, these many years. Their sons are June 12, loves baseball and Lego construction, which we all know is the beginning of a future Army engineer. <laughs> and Dev, 10, enjoys soccer and Pokemon. Abishaw family, welcome to the North Atlantic Division and the Norfolk District. So, the Abishals also recently celebrated, the only way I know this stuff is I follow them on Facebook, so <laughs> things pop up, but they also celebrated an anniversary, 13 years of marriage. Now, what makes this even more interesting is they got married where my parents retired in Western New York in Batavia. So I, I was like, wow, that's really cool. And then even more strangely enough, both the Hallbergs and the Abishals got married on June 26, different years, but same day. So it's like, wow, that's really interesting. How you know small of a world is that? So anyways, thanks, Sonny and Abishal family. Welcome to the team. Brian, you've proven to be a highly capable leader advancing the Norfolk program on many fronts. You've led the team through major milestones, including the Miami-Dade Back Bay Coastal. Now, some in this room cringe when they hear those words. It has been tough rowing to get this across the line. <laughs> we should all be saying woo. Um, I remember the day when I was the chief of staff when the Miami newspaper 
posted had, I don't know if you were still in command or you, you the transition, they posted in there the Berlin Wall picture okay. of what we were going to create. And right away it was like, ah, that's not good. Like, that's bad. Brian, thanks for your leadership over the past three years, though, in getting Miami Day where it is today. Uh, I would not be surprised if they named a street after you in Miami after this long haul, but you would certainly deserve it. Amongst other projects, the Norfolk Harbor deepening, and even more important of all the projects that you have led, Arlington National Cemetery Southern Expansion. One of the finest cemeteries in the world at Arlington that I'm sure many of you have visited, Brian and his team have led the effort to increase the size of the cemetery, expand it, working closely with KDA uh, out there to do that. It took a true leader, not only for those engagements, but overseeing that project. Thanks, Brian, for that. I called Brian one morning and said, hey, Brian, uh, We'd like to send you to South Florida after Hurricane Ian uh, to provide leadership in that dynamic environment. Without hesitation, Brian said absolutely, and we de deployed for a number of months uh, down there to do that where, again, he did a spectacular job. So, Sonny, you said this last night, and I've heard Brian say it numerous times, the transition with you both has been phenomenal. I really want to commend Brian, your leadership. It's hard to give up something that you love so dearly to someone else, but the character of a commander, the character of a commander is not about him, but about how well he transitions that responsibility to the next commander. And I will tell you, these two have been the epitome of what that looks like. And I know some of you would agree that you've been, you've gotten to see behind the scenes how Brian operates, and that's special. I will tell you both. Thanks, Brian, for your leadership. Now, Brian, there's one last thing. Aaron, where are you at? Aaron, there you are. Aaron, I'm, this is a question directly at you. Would you say that a project that starts in Norfolk must be delivered by Norfolk? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Okay. I, you hesitated, so that's <laughs> a little scary right there. So, Sarah, we were talking last night, and I know by fact, because it's coming from you, that Brian has started a project at your house <laughs> to build an outdoor kitchen thing with his dad. Now, Aaron. This project must be on time, on budget, <laughs> done safely, or he owes a CCIRA. True? True, sir. To, True. A, to a high quality standard. To a high quality. Yes, sir. We don't want to see any <laughs> shady stuff. So, Dad, you're kind of our contractor here. We're going to hold you accountable. But, Brian, we're not letting you off. We want to know how this project ends up. And if not, we're going to report it to the chief as a CCIRA. <laughs> Brian, after you depart, you're going to join the Skilled Bridge program. I'm very proud of you for doing that before retiring officially in January. But I want you to enjoy some time fishing, hunting. Uh, thanks for your service. Uh, I hope you get to celebrate a little retirement before you start working today. But you have been special, not only as a commander, Brian, but as a friend, a confidant when I needed to call someone and seek advice myself. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next chapter. We'll talk more about that at your retirement ceremony as well. Sonny, over to you. Today you become the 61st commander of the Norfolk District. Your most recent accomplishment serving over in Special Operations Command of Africa, where we work closely over there and operationally uh, what your command did in Africa. Your leadership experience will serve you well here. Welcome back to USACE, congratulations. Sonny comes to us as a very experienced USACE commander, but different. And even talking to General Whittle last night, uh, who made some great comments about Sonny and his deliberate nature. Commanding Nashville, previously in AD up at New England District, but it's different here in Norfolk. 43 different districts, all have different personalities. Norfolk has a personality, 
of its own with magnificent people. And if I got to pick someone to follow in Brian's footsteps, Sonny, it absolutely would be you. I know you were going to do great with this man. We look forward to you and Orby, uh, both part of the team. Commanding a district goes beyond projects and resources. It's about innovation, developing leaders, and upholding USACE's reputation for delivering quality projects on time, on budget, and done so safely. Colonels Brian Hallberg and Sonny Abishal are proven leaders who develop solutions and most importantly, take care of their people. To the Norfolk team, you are USACE's very best and I'm confident that you will continue to excel under Colonel Abishal's leadership. Brian, I think when you start a command, I often hear you say the small and mighty Norfolk District. Somewhere along the way, we dropped the small, and for the Norfolk District, you are mighty in the things you accomplish for our nation. As an NAD commander, I couldn't be more proud of this district in all that you do each and every day. General Whittle, I am lucky, one, to be in USAID's be a division commander, but even more luckier by the fact that I could come to work and literally do nothing. I have six phenomenal district commanders, and even with Brian leaving and gaining Sonny, I am still lucky. Uh, I'll still work hard uh, in everything that we do in NAD. Uh, but we're lucky to have Brian and Sonny with us, and I'm excited for the work with you in the days ahead. SEONs, building strong, be all you can be. Six, but 
learning that uh, General Retired Scott was also a Captain Out 6. And so we, we share that. Um, the, the other thing that we share is that your daughter, Kate, is our classmate, uh, Sarah Max's classmate. So um, happy to have you um, here and supporting us. Um, also, you know, we got all of our mission partners here and, and members from the state. And I just want to thank you uh, for, for coming as well. And thanks to the uh, 208 uh, band, um, it really makes it special that we have, you know, come in here and have the great music that's a part of this, uh, of, um, this, 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 this great day. Um, what also makes it special is, you know, Chaplain White Shin. Um, he's also our West Point classmate uh, to Sarah and I. So it's really cool um, whenever the chaplain that comes and, and does these events is um, you know, someone that you share a unique experience with. To my family, you know, Team Hallberg, you know, Sarah, she's a great military officer in her own right. You know, we are doing military. And it takes teamwork on a daily basis to make sure that our family runs. Um, and it takes great communication. It's, it's like, all right, so who's going to go pick up Elise tonight? <laughs> it's uh, like the question of the day is, you know, who's, who's going to get her? And um, so, so thank you, sir, for your love and support. And, you know, we've been able to manage our, our great team with some help. And I'm going to talk about that here in a second. To Isaac, Chase, and Elise, you know, you were born into a military family. You didn't choose this lifestyle. Um, so, you know, thank you for understanding whenever I'm not there at soccer games or at scouts or, you know, I, I miss something at school. Um, so hopefully I can manage that a little bit better in my next career. But, uh, I, you know, I love you all very deeply. So thank you for your support. <coughs> Mom, you've always been there for me, and uh, Sarah, even over the last three years, whenever uh, we had something going on, there was some conflict that Sarah had to work late, and I would call you at the last minute and say, hey, can you get on a plane and come out and, and be here for us, and, and you did that. Dad, you did the same. You, you've come and, and helped us out, um, and so I just appreciate you, your flexibility to, to do that and, and to support us. And, of course, we've uh, been working on this patio cover. You've been out in the heat for, <laughs> for and we are going to, we're going to finish ahead of time, and it's, it is high quality, so. <laughs> I don't think there's going to need to be a CCIR rate that goes to uh, the chief on, on this project, because it's, it's looking fantastic. And, you know, my bonus mom, man, uh, she's always treating me as one of her own kids, and she's always been a voice of reasoning. Uh, I would call on my right, right home and just needed some advice on, on, you know, my boys and them growing up. So thank you. Um, we have great friendship with our, our uh, friends on the Martins Point. And I'm so happy that you're here to celebrate this, this day with us. But we have like a bonus grandmother with Jeannie and a bonus aunt with Jen. Um, because it is hard with a dual military family to make sure everything happens in a timely manner. We've had to call our neighbors on more than one occasion and say, hey, we're running late, can you go and get um, a lease? And they've done that. Um, Jen and Jeannie, they take you know, Chase uh, to school, and you know, Chase and Bryce, they have great conversations and crack up um, the family. So, so thank you for being great neighbors and great friends and bonus aunts and grandmother. Uh, over the last month, you know, I've had an overwhelming just comments of support and outpouring of love, and I appreciate all of that. Uh, being the Norfolk District Commander, is, this is the best job I've had in the United States Army. Um, and why? You know, why is it the best job? Well, one, it, it comes down to the single idea of people. Okay, many of the people are sitting in this room or they're online. And it's the great people of the Norfolk District. The engineers, the scientists, if they're lawyers or realty specialists, like every day they just come into work and they work, they work hard to solve hard problems for our nation. And it is, it is our nation. We do a lot in our community here in Hampton Roads. 
Um, but our mission has been bigger than that. It's been in my, places like Miami-Dade County, Collier County, or up in Raritan Bay, New Jersey, or our real estate program that impacts the whole army. Um, so, um, you know, e every day just coming in and interacting, it's just been an honor to be a member of the, of the Norfolk District and allow, you know, the, the employees, my teammates allow me to lead you, so, so thank you. The other thing that's really special is our project sponsors and partnership, which has been huge to me. This idea of you're practicing the three C's, you know, it comes down to communication and collaboration and commitment so we can deliver projects for our nation. And it's really cool to be a part of these great projects. I love the drive. You know, a lot of you, you're like, I gotta go to DC traffic. That sucks. You know, four, four hours on I 95. Um, but I look forward to it because every time I go to Arlington, I come back just energized. And we go up there you know, once or twice a month and you, you get the VIP treatment because we get to go in the back door and drive straight to our projects and just see the operations on a daily basis and it just brings so much meaning uh, to our jobs and what we're doing to improve the place, right? We want to make Arlington National Cemetery an immaculate location that the public can come and honor their fallen loved ones. And so it's just been special to be there to, to work on the expansion. Um, many of us that serve in the, in the service, you know, we got to make a decision on where we're going to be honored someday. And, um, so if I'm just some small part of uh, making sure that there's capacity for all of us to have that opportunity, that's that's something special. Um, you know, we're we're in the army, so it's something that was new to me coming to the Norfolk District is. We have all these underwater highways everywhere. I'm like, why doesn't the Navy take care of that? <laughs> um, and so it was something that I learned, you know, the great dredging uh, mission that we have in working with the Coast Guard and you know, the Port Authority and the Maritime Association to make sure that our waterways are open and, and providing uh, great freedom of movement. Um, but what's been really special is the harbor deepening and making the, the Norfolk Harbor the deepest port on the East Coast. And so we've got um, all the contracts let, and you know, Sonny, like all things, you're gonna have a lot of, you're gonna be a, a ribbon cutting fool. <laughs> and uh, so hopefully you invite me out to you know, sit in the corner somewhere, and <laughs> make sure you cut the ribbon. Um, there's a lot of projects that you're going to get to celebrate with this great team, and the Norfolk Harbor Deepening is uh, going to be one of them. I've just grown a passion for what we do in the resiliency space, working with our uh, our partners, you know, especially with the cities of Norfolk and the cities of Virginia Beach, and um, now on the peninsula with the city of Hampton on figuring out what to do about mitigating the effects of coastal storm risk. And, uh, you know, I hope to take that passion into my next career and continue to do that and figure out a way to serve the Corps of Engineers in a different capacity because um, all these projects, it really comes down to people and protecting their property and making sure that after a storm, they can get back in their homes and start living their lives um, as, as normal people, because when I observed, uh, you know, when General Lloyd called me, I was actually at my, I didn't share this with him, but I was at my daughter's birthday dinner, and um, so I had to go outside and come back in, and I, I was like, it was General Lloyd, but I'll tell you guys later. Um, but when I, I went down to, to Florida, and I got to observe the impacts of you know, what a hurricane could do to a community and how it wrecked people's lives and that many people died. Um, it was just so powerful to go around and figure out ways to help people. And you know, my main mission while I was there is to get these temporary roofs, the blue roofs onto homes so people could get back in and, and, and start their lives again. And uh, that was just extremely powerful. 
being able to do that. And it's probably the most rewarding thing that I've done in my Army career was, uh, was going and doing that mission. Um, so I, I'm incredibly proud of the work that the district has completed over the last three years. Um, you know, I talked about many of the projects. I, I, I guess I, I skipped over how cool it is to be you know, part of all the work at uh, Langley. And, you know, they moved uh, uh, some more F-22s up to, to Langley, and we had to create, you know, all of the new facilities uh, to support that mission. And uh, so it's, it's been really cool to do that. And there's a lot of uh, project names nobody would understand in here, but, you know, we built a simulator you know, building a maintenance hangar or building a paint booth, all those things are super important for the most lethal aircraft in the world and uh, those pilots to, to be able to do what they do. Um, the last project that I got to visit um, this week was the Deep Creek Bridge. And the Deep Creek Bridge is, very, is, is really meaningful to this community um, because in the Deep Creek part of Chesapeake, uh, you know, the town continued to grow and grow and grow and grow, and uh, nobody really took into consideration uh, the need for, you know, a two-lane bridge to expand so they could get across and connect uh, that community. And uh, so it's been almost 40 years in the planning to be able to get uh, that bridge started. And I assumed a little bit of risk, and I called General Lloyd, and I was like, hey, we don't have all the real estate for this bridge. Um, there's two parcels, but I'm confident we're gonna get them. The condemnation packets are up at the Department of Justice. I think we need to proceed forward and, and get it. And General Lloyd, he supported me. And uh, assuming that little bit of risk, got the contractor in the ground, and as you go by there, um, in, you know, if you were to go by there today, there's so much concrete and steel going in. Um, it's it's a, a great sight to see. So I'm glad we ex accepted a little bit of risk and we, we got that project moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I'm uh, just really proud to be part of all that. So I want to thank all my teammates for allowing me to lead you over the last three years. I have a special thanks to Mike Darrow. I know he couldn't be here. There's, there's just a great time for my deputy commander this summer. Uh, spending well-deserved time with his family. He's actually on a cruise going from Bucharest to Budapest. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm sure he's enjoying his time with his wife. But he's been my right-hand man. He's been the voice of reason. I've spent a lot of time on the road with Mike, and I uh, think the world of him. And uh, I'm going to miss him. I know I'll have some uh, breakfasts with him and Pat Kinsman, so... I'll still get to be able to see him from time to time. I also want to thank uh, Aaron Edmondson, you know, my chief of construction, um, engineering and construction. Uh, you know, Katya Oxley, my chief of contracting, Keith Lockwood, who's uh, representing the senior, senior leadership today, and my chief of water resources uh, division. And I got Tom Everett, he's my chief of council, Laura Boyles, my resource manager, Matt Ferguson, uh, Reggie Jamo, he's here somewhere. He was uh, my previous deputy. Um, you know, I got, I was so lucky to have Tony Funkhauser sitting behind me as my deputy, and Cheryl Frommie, who's gonna come back to the district, as well as uh, Jamaica, I see you back there. You're just uh, a huge part of, of the district. So, you know, all of those names that I just called off, they're part of the executive staff. We work together to make decisions. And uh, so thank you for being there, not just to support me as your commander, but I feel like we have a great friendship. And uh, so thank you for that. Finally, I want to congratulate Sonny and Orby and the Abachal family on assuming command today. Sonny, you're, you are the right commander. It is hard uh, to give over command, but it's easy whenever you look at the commander and say, hey, you know, this, the, he's, he's a great leader. He's going to continue to lead the organization to even uh, greater successes. So I look forward to watching your successes from afar. 
um, over the next three years, and you have many celebrations ahead, so congratulations. Well, thank you all for listening to me uh, ramble on for a good 10 minutes or so. Um, building strong, SEOs, be all you can be. Soldier for life. Focused about what comes next in retirement. 
you really focused 100% on making sure that I was comfortable and that the district was set up for success. And I think that's just a true testament to who you are, and so thank you for that. Hope you enjoy retirement and fishing. You certainly earned it, so uh, all the best, my man. It's my family and friends. There are a lot of them in the crowd. And it's one of those things where you invite a lot of people and you're not sure who's gonna show up, and next thing you know, like, all of you show up. <laughs> <laughs> Which is great, it's not a bad thing, yeah. Um, but no, I, I, I just, I mean, it means so much. Uh, we've been moving around a lot. Uh, 22 years of military service, 10 or 15 moves uh, under our belt, and so this is great that we're able to, to be close enough now to where you can attend these ceremonies, and I'm just so honored that you, you took the time to come. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge a couple of my friends that, that made a surprise visit, some of them. Uh, Jeff Lau, my college uh, tennis teammate. Uh, thanks for coming here all the way from Boston last night. Um, Steve Green, uh, coming down from the Office of Secretary of Defense's uh, Rose is working really hard down there, so thanks for making the time. And, and John Carlton, my, my college roommate, thank you for, for coming here. Um, also in the D.C. area, working uh, as a congressional liaison. To my, uh, my in-laws, you guys have been there. For all of our moms. Every single move that we've had, you've been there to support us, and I just want to say, we couldn't be here today without everything that you've done. To my mom, you are definitely an example of what it is to be a true, patri true matriarch of a family. You are the strongest person that I know, so thank you. Finally, my immediate family, my kids, uh, Arjun and Dev, they are absolutely great, turning into great young men. Uh, when we found out that we were going to come to the ceremony, we went out and we got these really dapper looking suits. The Converse is really, they get their style from their mom, definitely not from me. And, uh, they look absolutely extraordinary, so thank you boys for everything that you do. And then finally, uh, to my wife. My awesome and beautiful wife, she is definitely the reason why I'm here today. You've been with me, supporting me through all the ups and downs, and you are definitely my best half. And I can't thank you and appreciate you enough. Okay. I truly do have a lot to be thankful for, and so thank you. To the members of the Norfolk District, both current and former, over the last four weeks I've been able to see firsthand your commitment to safely delivering quality projects on time and on budget. The work you are doing has and will change this entire community, the Commonwealth, and the national defense infrastructure. It will change it for generations. It's monumental work that I'm extremely proud to join you on. I'm humbled to, to assume command as a 61st District Commander, and I'll do my best to uphold the already stellar reputation of this extraordinary organization. Building Strong, SAMT. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the singing of the engineer song and the army song and remain standing for the departure of the official party. The words of each song are located in the back of your program. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you. 